It was clear to me from his resume that Imam Suhaib Webb is an extraordinary individual. An American-born convert to Islam, he left a career in the music industry to pursue advanced education in Islam, including six years in Cairo at Al-Hazhar University, a preeminent Islamic institution of higher learning. He also completed the memorization of the Quran, an important attainment. Imam Suhaib Webb is also extraordinary for his passionate concern for the poor and marginalized in our society. It has been my pleasure to stand with him through the Interfaith Council and hear him speak about our religious duties to create a society that is compassionate and just for those struggling at the bottom rungs. Finally, and most relevant to our program today, is the strongly worded statement he issued against Holocaust denial following his recent trip to Auschwitz. We bear witness to the absolute horror and tragedy of the Holocaust, where over 12 million human souls perished, including 6 million Jews. We condemn any attempts to deny this historical reality and declare such denials or any justification of this tragedy as against the Islamic Code of Ethics. It's an honor to be here. Um, you've asked me to revisit something that, um, as a child, uh, when I would have a nightmare, usually it was about my closet. So for a week or two after, I would never go in my closet. And my mother would have to beg me to go and put on my clothes. And I would sit on my bed and cry. Uh, I wouldn't go in the closet. Eventually, my mother would have to come and bring the clothes to me. Since my, my trip in late uh, July, early August, she, Rabbi Melly, has been just an unbridled uh, example of friendship and love since I have returned back to the Bay Area. After my studies for almost seven years in Egypt, I was invited to visit the, the Holocaust um, what happened there, uh, and you find me, I'm, I'm struggling to talk about it. Because after I left, I basically sealed the emotions of what I saw. My wife, uh, who's a Malaysian citizen, uh, green card holder, asked me, tell me what you saw. And I was not able to really, you know, bring into words the horror. Some of my friends in the Muslim community asked me to describe the trip, especially to Brekenau. And literally, I was not able to, to, to bring into words the verbiage needed to describe the horror that we witnessed there. And, and today, you're asking me to revisit that closet. You're asking me to revisit something that literally uh, serves to remind me of the danger of the assumption of truth and superiority. And we mark this week also the struggle of humanity, a remembrance. Its design is to keep us from heedlessness. And just yesterday, someone in the name of a religion denied the Holocaust. On Tuesday, a mosque in Maine was spray painted, first bin Laden, next Islam. What the Holocaust served to remind us of is the danger of apathetic justice in the face of aggressive bigotry. The danger of the silence of truth in front of the screams of falsehood. The aggression of evil in the face of a comatose reality of what's right and wrong. I sat in Auschwitz with a Holocaust survivor and I asked him, out of everything that's happened to you, what, what is the most devastating thing? And he said to me, those who could have stopped this, who did it. Now we're looking today at the survival of happenstance. And it's a lesson for us to make sure that survival is maintained by the religious communities, by the civic communities, and by society in general. So that in the future, the survival of people, and from today forward, is guaranteed by the masses, guaranteed by the church, 
guaranteed by the mosque, guaranteed by the synagogue, and guaranteed by the city council. The second thing that I learned as I finished is I had lived in Egypt for six years. I was completely out of it. I didn't even know who won the Super Bowl for like six years, <laughs> which is almost impossible for someone from Oklahoma. <laughs> and I started, when I returned back to the West, I went to Germany first, and I met Rabbi, Rabbi Jack there. And Rabbi Jack is just an incredible human being, a scholar. Uh, of the Jewish tradition, and he grabbed me, and he said, are you aware of what's going on in New York? To my, I have no idea what's going on in New York. Then there were other Jewish community members who were sending me emails, asking me, are you aware of what's going on in New York? It was the Jewish community who came to me first, terrified of the threat of what was going on with the Park 51 problem. And that exemplifies, as I finish, that what bonds us together is stronger than what pulls us apart as communities. And we can no longer allow, allow within our own communities the rhetoric of racism in the name of truth and bigotry in the name of self-righteous assumptions to dominate. So as I finish, I am not able to talk about Auschwitz. And I will tell you that Schlinder's list is nothing compared to the horror that you will see if you were there. It is nothing compared to the devastation. I saw, I saw ponds with bones in them in Breckenau. The number of innocent children killed just is absolutely unbelievable. And as I left and struggled to, to, to kind of formulate a verbiage for the explosion of emotions that rested in my chest, I saw the sign in the museum Never again. That slogan should reverberate from Auschwitz to America to remind us in the face of bigotry against sexual preferences, religious preferences, race, color, the struggle of labor. We have to stand up as a community and say, not only with our voices, but with our actions and our activism, never again. May God bless all of you. Thank you for your time. Assalamu alaikum, shalom, peace. Mm -hmm.